You know, there's a lot of talk these days about subconscious beliefs and limiting beliefs and how it affects us and our relationships, but what does that really mean? And how are they actually created? Stay till the end and I'm gonna to talk to you about some of the limiting beliefs, how they can be structured, how they're impacting your relationship now, and quick tips to take care of that right after the show reel. So if you find any value in this channel, I'd love for you to subscribe. And I want you to start first, imagine this picture. So right now you're an adult, you're a semi-adult, something like that, right? Cause that's why you're watching something about relationships on YouTube. So imagine now you go in the kitchen, you grab a knife and you cut your hand, right? Okay. So you've got resources. In other words, you know how to go grab a bandage, you know how to bandage it up. You can probably drive yourself or get yourself to a hospital if you need. You know, you know how to take care of yourself. You know how to manage, right? You're resourced. Now imagine you said you do that when you're eight. Okay, so you cut yourself with a knife. It's a little more painful. You're freaking out. Maybe you're thinking you're gonna get in trouble for using knives when you're not supposed to use knives. Maybe your mom and dad told you not to and you did it anyway. So now the same incident actually comes with a whole different set of brain reactions, right? We start getting afraid. Am I gonna get in trouble? How do I take care of myself? Now imagine the same thing happens when you're three. You reach up on a counter, you pull down a knife and you cut yourself. Suddenly you're in pain, you're bleeding, you're screaming. Nobody comes to help. You have no resources. At this age and under the age of seven, our brain records that information and we can develop a belief around that such as people aren't there for me when I need them. Life is dangerous. Things are painful. Maybe you don't develop a limiting belief. Maybe instead you get an aversion like you hate cooking and you don't know why you hate cooking, but actually it's because your brain thinks cooking's dangerous because of when you cut yourself when you were three years old. So do you see how that can happen? So my challenge for you is when you're with relationships, and I'm not just talking about boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, you know, partner, partner type relationships. I'm also talking about family relationships. If you start noticing yourself, thinking, why am I not getting what I need? Am I good enough? Am I blank enough? Am I too much? Why aren't they? That can be a really subtle key to a limiting or a subconscious belief that was created somewhere earlier in your life from either something you observed, like maybe your parents or your family members or a teacher did or said something, maybe you're bullied in a certain way that created these beliefs. Maybe that was part of your life experience. Maybe you were told that, or maybe you had something as simple as a knife cut happen, which was not so simple. And it created a belief that life is not safe. People aren't there for me. I can't trust. Does that make sense? So what I want you to do now is write down a list of things that maybe your brain tells you or you hear yourself saying over and over and over again that may or may not be true. In other words, sometimes our ego has convinced ourselves that this thing is true. And we look for, it's called confirmation bias. We actually look for all the reasons why this is true in our life. Like for example, I have to rely on myself because no one's there for me. I might put myself into specific situations that set me up for no one being able to help me. And then I can say, see, nobody was there for me when I needed them. Does that make sense? And these can be both quote unquote positive and quote unquote negative. We might feel like money comes to us whenever we need it. We might feel like people are always there for us. We might feel like we're well listened to, right? These are also beliefs that were created, but they form a positive function. So journal those positive and those quote unquote negative beliefs because they're not negative, right? They've actually helped us survive. They're actually good things. They're just no longer serving us. And then you can do things like emotional freedom techniques or tapping to start looking for the source. 
You can hire a counselor. You can do some meditation. Where did this come from? Is this still true for me? There are a lot of resources out there. And in fact, on my other channel, I actually have a lot of tapping videos. But you can actually sit and look at where did this come from and how is it showing up in my relationship? And then when you start noticing yourself bringing that up in your own relationship, you can pause and be like, aha, right now I'm reacting to my partner as if they're not listening to me. But is that true? Maybe they're listening to you, just not in the way that you need them to. Maybe they're listening and they're just not reflecting it in the back, in the way back that you can hear it, right? So when we start shifting our limiting beliefs, we start doing that by looking for, instead of looking for the things that confirm our belief, we start looking in our relationships or in our life for the things that are against that. So in other words, if I believe that no one's there for me, I start looking for all the times and make a list of all the times that people were there for me. And it can be little, like someone held a door for me at the grocery store. Or, you know, I was, I didn't have enough cash and someone gave me a quarter or whatever, right? It can be very, very, very small. So start looking for those things to start changing your belief systems, which will also improve your relationship. Does that make sense? So comment below, what are some limiting or subconscious beliefs that you already know that you have that you want to change? What are the things you hear yourself say over and over to your partner, to your family, to your friends? Is it that they never follow through on their word? They don't care about me. Um, I can't make enough money. Money is hard. Life is hard. What is that belief system that you have that you want to change? So now in your relationship, express that to your other person. Say, you know what I've noticed? I've noticed that I have this belief that. And every time you hear me say those words, will you remind me that it's not true? Because now you can ask for support, you can ask for help, and you can actually start getting what you need. Okay? So. That's my tip for you today. So number one, look for where those limiting subconscious beliefs are. See if you can find out where they came from. If it's something that's traumatic, right? And it can be experienced as a trauma when you're a child and your adult brain says that's not really a trauma. It doesn't matter. If it was experienced as a trauma, it's a trauma. And then get some professional support for that. Get someone that works with traumas in a really safe, gentle way to help clear those emotions. Ask for support in the way that you need to and start looking for the ways that what you believe is not true. That's gonna help you really solidify your relationship. Because now instead of feeling insecure, like nobody cares, like nobody's around, now we can start saying, oh, brain, ego, that's not true. I'm gonna do a little bit of tapping, clear that emotion, and I'm gonna reset myself and see actually how this person is doing their best to support me right now. How this person really is listening. How I am valuable in this world. Comment below. Affirm, the more you affirm out loud, the better you are. Say, I am valuable, I am worthy, I'm loving, and I'm lovable. Because that's the point of my channel, is to help all of you feel loved, wanted, and connected. So until next time, I'm Dawn. Let's knock out those subconscious beliefs together. And there's more videos if you need them.